Hello again, this is the Richard and Judy Book Club in exclusive conjunction with WH Smith and this is this week's book. This is a, a remarkable story because you, you really live in someone else's interior world, that of a, of a young girl. It's called The Land of Decoration by, uh, by Grace McLean. It's about a young motherless girl uh, who lives with her father. Uh, he is devoutly religious extremely devout and so is she she has no choice that's what she's been brought up to and this makes her different and separate from from her friends at school everywhere really um, her life is almost all for the church that they belong to and she has this extraordinary thing in her bedroom it's a sort of model village in a way uh, which she makes out of rubbish um, but she discovers when she's been bullied very severely at school and is desperate desperate to find any reason not to go the next day because she thinks she's going to have her head stuffed down a toilet by the bullies. She, she wonders, wouldn't it be smashing if it snowed and we had a, we had a school day, you know, there was no way that anyone could get to school. So in the model village, before she goes to bed, she makes a snowstorm with shaving foam and flour and sugar and stuff, and wakes up the next morning, and this is October, and there has been a massive snowfall outside overnight. And this is the start, the point of the book, that the model village, the the land of decoration of the title is a way of creating miracles and it's utterly believable. Uh, Grace, it's an extraordinary concept. Um, I wasn't sure as I started to read it if, if it was going to work, to be honest, because it's so mm. it's such an extreme storyline, mm. but it does. How, how did it occur to you to have a little girl who can do these things? I was writing a really long book which wasn't working very well and uh, one day I gave myself permission to stop writing the long book and just wrote what um, was occurring to me at the time and that, that was the first page of the land of decoration and and then I didn't know you know who was speaking or what it was about so I just kind of worked my way backwards from that um, mm. and asked myself who was the character and it seemed to be a child and everything the whole in the whole book is was basically grew you know like a little mustard seed from that first page. Extremely. Yeah. So when you started, you honestly didn't know what you were really going to do with no. it. But the power of what you'd actually written arrested you so much mm. that you thought you could turn it into into something else. Because it is a quite an extraordinary concept. I, I don't know if it's extraordinary, but it did all come from that little bit of prose that well, I just I can, let I myself write. I can write. see that. It's, if, if you don't mind, I'll just read the first mm -hmm. couple of paragraphs. So the chapter, the prologue is uh, The Empty Room. Uh, in the begin and you can see the biblical references straight mm -hmm. away. In the beginning, there was an empty room, a little bit of space, a little bit of light, a little bit of time. I said, I'm going to make fields, and I made them from table mats, carpet, brown corduroy, and felt. Then I made rivers from crepe paper, cling film, and shiny tin foil, and mountains from papier-mâché and bark. And I looked at the fields, and I looked at the rivers, and I looked at the mountains, and I saw they were good. Mm. And I said, now for some light. So we're really in, in, in Genesis mm. territory here, aren't mm. we? Yeah. Um, what about the nature of God in this book? Because this little girl has a ongoing dialogue, proper conversations with, uh, with yeah. the Almighty, doesn't she? Yeah, maybe, or oh, maybe, maybe, okay. maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. I, I mean, I don't know as an author, you know, whether she's schizophrenic or whether, I mean, I, I don't believe in a personal God anymore, but so I, it was completely open in my mind as I was writing it, mm. you know, I, I, and I think that's the best way to, to work, to not, you know, know, um, to formulate your ideas and to plot and plan because mm -hmm. it's much looser and more this organic and spirited. This is your first novel? Well, it is my first published novel, but I chose to approach publishers with this book um, rather than two others, which were almost finished, right. because they w I thought they were not saleable and not publishable. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> they are going to be published now, thanks to this yes, one. Yes. But yeah. I thought this you're was the more accessible and friendly sort of yes, book. Yes, it, it is a very friendly um, book, actually. Mm. Technically, it's beautifully written. Um, it, oh. it reads to me like somebody who's possibly gone on a three-year writing course or something. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh. yeah, it's really good. I think it's very flat and, you know, <laughs> awful <laughs> in places. Joking. No, it really, but, yeah, there's just a few moments which are, are so worth something, but most of it is not very good. You're wrong. It's, <laughs> no, it's, you're wrong. Well, it's, I, it's sublime. The girl takes 
dreadful revenge <laughs> using using the uh, the land mm. of decoration on these bullies who uh, who pick on her simply because she's religious and different. And she can't sit in assemblies because she's not meant to associate with the world and all mm. this nonsense. Um, it made me wonder if, if you were bullied at school because the revenge mm. is quite exquisite actually. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, was, for example, I was mm, bullied at school, mm. and I wish I could have done what she did to them. Well, <laughs> yeah, so do I. I. I was bullied. Maybe there was a bit of wish fulfillment there, yeah, and yeah. the fantasizing about. Um, I think it's interesting, though, that as a child, I probably would have just wanted to wreak revenge and not really come to the place where Judith does, because by being able to exact some sort of retribution um, on her enemies, she, she actually comes to feel empathy for them, you know, mm. and comes to see them as as victims themselves in their own That's way true. in different circumstances so, so now no, now that this has been so well received mm. and, uh, and 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 well received by critics this has given you a huge amount of confidence I don't know because in a way I feel it's very misunderstood still so what this book yeah so I think that what people love about it is one thing but but I'm not sure it's the real thing. But maybe they'll see the real thing in a while. So when you say, has it given me confidence? It has in the sense that I never thought I could move people, or I never thought I could touch people, or I never thought I could mm. interest them, you know, and mm. make them turn pages. And I have done that with some people, but I still don't feel completely understood. But I think maybe when the other two books come along, people will yes. You'll develop see a, body a bit of work. more. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask yeah. you what, what your thoughts are on organised religion? Mm. Uh, because, I mean, I personally found the, the, the nature of, of the worship and of the belief system that this girl endures through her father and, and, the, and these tight-knit members of, of their church mm. infuriating. Right. Um, because it closes her off to so much mm. and shuts down her imagination so much and it's so rigid. Um, mm. I, I, was I wrong to get the impression that, that you disapprove of organised religion? I really don't. And I, I don't have... I, I hope there were no villains in the book, and no, I hoped not. I could no, kind not. of make everyone sympathetic well, characters. Except God. He's Actually, unpleasant. interestingly <laughs> enough, yeah, except God, if if he is a real God and not some figment of Judith's, you know, yeah. subconscious. But um, I I think there's a lot of danger with organised religion because of the power it has. Mm. But I don't think it's bad per se. Mm. Mm. Well, well uh, you're an exceptionally modest yes, um, yes. person for a, a writer of such rare skill um, who can tell such an unusual story so definitively and believably. Um, it, and you're, of course, lots is open to question. Is God speaking to her as you say, or is she schizophrenic? Mm. Um, and many other aspects of the miracles that she, she seems to be able to, uh, to create. But uh, I just congratulate you. I think it's wonderful. Mm, and I do you hope so you do, do find the confidence that Judy assumed that you now have. Mm, thank you very much. Oh, you should. Um, thank you. It's really worth a go, this. It really is. So you'll fall into it. Um, the Land of Decoration by Grace McLean. And as ever, if you, if you get your copy of it from WH Smith's as opposed to anywhere else, uh, in the back there's lots of extra content. There's our interview that we do on the page with the, with the authors. Um, there's uh, details on how to download the podcast, all that kind of stuff. But really, the, 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 the great thing about this book is it's just a story of the, of the kind you've never read before, and you'll love it. Thank you.